Move on to Japan because what happens if you put the world's best-selling handheld game machine in the world's biggest burger chain? Black DSIs donning the McDonald's M came with unique DS cartridges containing training software. And uh, Mike, how exactly are they teaching the uh, McD's members with the, uh, was it the NSDS or something like that? The, the DS. Perhaps someone out there watching this video knows more than we do. But for now, the McDonald's training game is a mystery. In the year 2010, McDonald's Japan announced something shocking. In March of that year, the company revealed a brand new program to train part-time McDonald's employees, a partnership to create an exclusive piece of software for the Nintendo DS. This unassuming little cartridge would then go on to become one of the rarest Nintendo DS games of all time. Today I'll be telling you the story of this legendary game and how, in June of 2020, one of the last known copies disappeared into the hands of an anonymous collector forever. Now this program was a big deal for McDonald's Japan. The company claimed that this cartridge would allow them to train new employees in half the time it would usually take. It was a huge investment for the company too. This whole endeavor of manufacturing and distributing these carts was costing them roughly 200 million yen, or $2 million, and that's not even counting the cost of developing the software itself. And while the title of the game isn't particularly exciting, the official name is E-Crew Development Program, the contents of this cartridge are fascinating. From what little we know, the game was surprisingly robust, with just a ton of personality, lots of custom sprite work, and even some rudimentary 3D for the little boxes the hamburgers come in. This game shows trainees how to assemble a quarter pounder with cheese. You can also learn how to cook fries and clean your workstation. <laughs> And I say what little we know, because for the past decade, this game has been completely lost to time. For about 10 years now, this unassuming little blue cartridge has been the holy grail for many Nintendo collectors. While nobody knows precisely how many copies were manufactured, estimates range from a few hundred to a few thousand, one thing is for sure, this game, if you can even call it a game, is highly sought after. Now this tactic of taking something that appeals to the young people of Japan and deploying it as a recruitment tactic is something McDonald's Japan has done many times before. Among the most memorable examples would be this anime style Join the McDonald's Crew campaign from a few years back featuring members of popular idol group AKB48. This game is so rare in fact that it even spawned conspiracy theories that it never existed in the first place. I've come across YouTube comments before claiming that this game is a total hoax and it's just people mixing up some Hilton PSP game for training employees and transposing a memory onto McDonald's. And of course, the existence of that Bloomberg news report I showed you at the beginning kind of contradicts the whole this game is a hoax theory. But strangely, that Bloomberg news report has remained the closest look we've ever gotten at gameplay for 10 years now. And Bloomberg's Mike Fern went to McDonald's Training Center in the heart of Tokyo. And that game is uh, a little bit trickier than it looks, actually. If you don't get everything exactly right, it won't let you shake your fries. Japan, the only country where McDonald's uses the DS to train staff. Somehow, in the time since that Bloomberg reporter paid a visit to McDonald's Japan HQ, we have never really gotten a close look at the game, and nobody has really gotten their hands on the cartridge, or at least everybody who has gotten their hands on the cartridge has kept it completely to themselves. Or at least that was the case until December 2018, when a user on assemblergames.com named Code1038 made the following post announcing he'd gotten his hands on the game. Hello guys, I found this very rarest cartridge a year ago and I'm still at same point. I can't reach hidden menu to see 3D Burger and play games. I've tried with famous Japanese speaker to enter in it, but unfortunately, I need a code. I've made this little video what I can do. Help needed. Now maybe you're confused, so I'll explain. Code1038 on this forum, also known as Cody Tontweet on YouTube, had actually gotten his hands on a copy of this coveted game. However, and here's the incredibly intriguing part, he had been stuck for years on the title screen because the title screen required a password. 
Cody had even included a video captured directly from his copy of the game showing the issue. And sure enough, this gameplay video, the only gameplay video we have of the McDonald's training game, is only two minutes long because he couldn't get past the title screen. And while it's only two minutes long, what's in those two minutes is unbelievably intriguing. First off, there's this amazing opening cutscene. And then there's my personal favorite part, the incredible main menu music, which, if you listen closely, you'll note is a reorchestrated chiptune interpretation of the classic McDonald's ba da ba 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 jingle. Just listen. But tragically, this was all Cody could see. Even though he owned the cartridge, he could only watch that title screen and get to that main menu over and over and had been stuck there according to him for a year. Now this in and of itself is extremely weird. The idea of a Nintendo game cartridge with a unique password to lock out unintended players is already very unusual. But the fact that this functionality was built into what is also arguably the single rarest Nintendo DS game ever manufactured made the whole thing even more intriguing. Now, making things even trickier is the fact that Cody refused to share the contents of the cartridge. In the comments of his video and all over the internet, people have begged him to dump the game. The comments on the video are now locked, but in this video by the YouTuber Blame It On Jorge, you can see somebody asking Cody to please dump the ROM and him saying, smiley face, that's illegal, smiley face. Even going back to his initial forum thread, Cody said, P.S. I can't share ROM. And when another user insisted that Cody dump the cartridge, he stood firm. Quote, Law is law, and I've already stuffed for dumping. Sharing is still illegal by law, and I'm very strict for this point. I've bad personal experience about illegal download. I'm working with people who are very strict about information sharing. In other words, Cody would not be dumping the cartridge and distributing it online, so picking the game apart inside the software and looking for the password was not going to be an option. Now, while researching all this, I reached out to a video game conservationist and translator named Samuel Messner to ask him about this phenomenon. Why do collectors keep these one-of-a-kind games hoarded for themselves? Yeah, so this is um, an issue that is a bit hard to dodge because whenever you've got something that's valuable, the only thing that's going to drive you to do anything that decreases that value is uh, altruism <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, idealism, right? right. Uh, and, you know, personally, I'm very much an idealist, so that's what I would do. But uh, some people, you know, are not very into the idea that things they have in their collection would suddenly be worth so much less. Now, despite Cody's insistence on not sharing, the members of the now defunct Assembler Games Forum did their very best to help him out. They translated the menus for him, picked apart his extracted game saves that he uploaded, attempted to contact Japanese game collectors for help, and nothing. They came up completely empty handed. Eventually, the forum shut down and the quest hit what looked like a permanent dead end. Now, for over a year, this was where this story ended. There was no real movement on Cody's hunt to get access to this game. But then, in June of 2020, just a few months ago, there was an enormous development. Over on Yahoo Auctions Japan, a seller by the name of Nanvata0122 was selling a copy, an actual copy, of the McDonald's training game. And that would have been exciting enough on its own, but the thing that made this auction really special is that from the photos you could tell that whoever this mysterious person is who was selling the game actually had the password. In all the photos of the game, you could see it being played. There was actual gameplay on the screen. This person had the password that Cody needed, the password for this specific cartridge, which was completely unprecedented. Now the thing is, Nanvada0122 clearly knew what this was worth, because they listed this auction at a whopping 345,000 yen, the equivalent of about 3.5 thousand US dollars. Still, the item description was clear. You weren't just paying for this very rare game and the equally rare 
matte black McDonald's logo branded DSi, included in this auction was the code required to boot the game up. For the very first time in 10 years, there was finally a path forward, a way for the world to finally see what secrets the Japanese McDonald's training game had, but there was an enormous 350,000 yen roadblock in the way. Cody reappeared now on a new forum called Obscure Gamers and posted, I found a guy on Yahoo Auctions Japan who has full access to menu. I need someone to contact him and get access. But of course, that never happened. No one was able to reach out to Nanva0122, and besides, there's no way this person would be giving up this password. And then the auction just sat there for weeks, with seemingly no one willing to fork up the cash for this very, very, very rare game. That was until July 9th at 9 p.m. Japan time, when an anonymous person placed a sniper bid at the last second, won the game, and then vanished. That was four months ago now, and ever since that auction ended, nobody has stepped forward as the owner of this game. In 2020, one was put up for sale on Yahoo Japan Auctions with one of the training cartridges and sold for the equivalent of around $3,200. Most people have just assumed that it went into the hands of a private collector, someone who's as fascinated as you and I about Nintendo history, who has no intention of ever sharing this precious gem with the outside world. Seemingly, this person was perfectly content to just enjoy this game themselves and never let us see what the gameplay looked like. Just as quickly as it had appeared, the game had once again vanished. And so too had the world's only opportunity to actually experience the gameplay of the McDonald's training game. And until now, this has been where this story ends, an unsatisfying and predictable outcome that honestly paints a pretty grim picture of the state of video game preservation. But I'm here to tell you that there's more to this story. A lot more. Because viewer, I've been keeping a secret from you. See, the person who placed that bid, the person who won that $3,500 auction for the McDonald's DS game, the person who now owns the only copy with the password included, that person is me. All right, let's back up. Four months ago, I received a comment on one of my videos saying you have to make a video about the lost Japanese DS game made for McDonald's employees. And while I don't normally solicit video ideas from my YouTube comments, this idea immediately hooked me. I had no idea that this cartridge existed. And the more I looked into it, the more fascinated I became by this whole thing. It wasn't long before I found myself on a forum thread where one user said, I found an auction, but it's too darn expensive. It ends on Thursday. The thing is, when I came across this thread, it was already Thursday. Frantically, I clicked the auction link and there I was staring down a copy of the game I had just spent an entire night researching and there were just 30 minutes left. For that entire half hour, I was just pacing in front of my desk, trying to decide whether or not this purchase could be worth it. I kept talking myself into it and then talking myself out of it over and over and then finally I caved. With two minutes left on the auction, I clicked the place bid button and saw this. Turns out the website I was using had a 300,000 yen limit on my account and the auction was seconds away from ending. And as I watched it slip away, I was pretty bummed out, but also kind of relieved that this temporary insanity that had taken over me hadn't driven me to spend a preposterous amount of money on a piece of McDonald's employee trading software from Japan. With the auction over, I refreshed the page, curious to see if some other last minute bidder had swooped in and stolen it. And lo and behold, that's when I realized that the auction had been set to automatically relist. This meant that I now had six whole days to formulate a plan to get my hands on this thing. Now, maybe you've noticed that when it comes to placing the actual bids, I'm not doing it through Yahoo Auctions Japan directly. I'm doing it through another website called Bai. That's because most sellers on Yahoo Auctions Japan do not offer international shipping. And that's where Bai steps in. In essence, they allow international customers like you and me to shop directly for items on Yahoo Auctions Japan, Mercari, Rakuten, and a ton of other Japanese online retailers. The way Bai works is that these items you buy are then shipped to Bai's warehouse, packed together in one package, and then shipped to you all as one big thing to save you time, hassle, and a lot of money. 
Now, I've partnered with Bai before on videos, like for this unboxing of a ton of Japan exclusive Super Monkey Ball and Mario items, but this was different. This time, I was going to be asking them a way bigger question. I wanted to know if there was any chance Bai would be willing to help me out and assist me in securing this historic video game. Amazingly, they said yes. Now, I can't tell you how happy I was when Bai said yes to this proposition. And with their help, I placed the bid, waited, and then won the auction. However, there was still one enormous hurdle left to clear. See, it's still 2020, and over the summer, as a temporary precaution due to current world events, Japan actually halted shipping in or out of the country. See, Japan's primary mail provider is Japan Post, and Japan Post had an enormous list of countries who they were forbidding all mail to be sent or received from, and included on that list was my home country, the United States of America. This posed an enormous problem. I needed to devise a way to somehow get this game out of Japan at a time when mailing things in and out of Japan was strictly forbidden. Out of options and desperate for some sort of resolution, I knew what I had to do. And it's not what you think. See, normally in a situation like this, my solution, as you probably could have guessed if you've seen my other videos, would be to go to Japan and secure the package myself. But not only had Japan halted all mail in or out of the country, they've also halted all tourism in and out of the country, so there was no way I'd be getting in. So I'm sure you can understand my predicament here. I effectively had to figure out a way to book a flight to Tokyo in search of answers at a time when booking a flight to Tokyo in search of answers is literally against the law. Luckily, I had an ace up my sleeve. See, around this time last year, my younger brother Mark actually moved to Tokyo to go to university. And while all foreign residents of Japan, including people with student visas, have been forbidden from leaving and re-entering the country during the pandemic, my brother had just been granted special permission to head back to the United States for a few weeks for a mandatory medical checkup. And by the way, just to reassure you, he got his checkup and everything's fine. So here was my idea. If I could somehow get this game into Mark's hands before his flight back to America, he could theoretically smuggle the McDonald's DS out of Japan in his luggage and the package would be secure. Now, for whatever reason, I felt a real sense of urgency with this mission. Blame it on Jorge's video that mentioned this McDonald's game had shined an enormous spotlight on it, and I couldn't shake the feeling that someone else might beat me to the punch on this. Now, a couple weeks after winning the auction, the item finally arrived at Bai's warehouse, but I was really, really running out of time. By this point, it was July 28th, and my brother's flight to America was just three days away an incredibly narrow window to get this thing delivered. So if this item didn't arrive quickly, this plan was doomed. For two very stressful days, this possibility hung over my head that after all this work, after all the money we'd spent, and after everything else had lined up so perfectly, a simple scheduling issue could unravel this entire plan. Then, on July 30th, I got this Discord message from my brother. The package had been secured. So while I was packing up my stuff to get ready to uh, return to America here in a few days, I am pretty sure that I heard a certain package arrive at my doorstep. So we're going to go check that out. Oh. Not only is the inside of this cardboard box an incredibly rare, one-of-a-kind make and model of DS, it also could potentially hold trade secrets of the McDonald's Corporation. So I'm going to be very careful opening this. You know, you know who knows what kind of like this could be bugged. Maybe we could. I could have the McDonald's corporate team busting down my door with riot shields. Any second now. Oh my goodness. With barely a day left before his flight, Mark safely packed the McDonald's DS 
into his enormous blue suitcase, and soon he was on his way to Tokyo's Haneda Airport. And to be honest with you, the particulars of whether or not Mark would even be able to leave were kind of a big question mark. Jumping through the hoops to get all the paperwork filled out so that Mark could return home was an enormous hassle, and there was no real guarantee he would even be able to leave, much less get back into the country. Mark entered the airport, and with virtually all flights in and out of Japan canceled due to the pandemic, Haneda's international terminal was a ghost town. Everywhere he looked, seats were blocked off, forbidding people from sitting next to each other, a measure that ultimately proved redundant since almost every seat in the airport was unoccupied. Soon, it was time for Mark's flight, and a few minutes later, Mark found himself on board a virtually empty airplane from Tokyo to the United States. Meanwhile, halfway across the world, me and my family were on our way to the airport to go meet Mark and see him for the first time since the pandemic. I was extremely excited. Excited, of course, to see my brother for the first time since 2019, something that seemed almost impossible to pull off in the midst of COVID, but also excited that the world would finally get a close look at this legendary and mysterious game for the first time ever. We arrived at the airport, masked up, and after patiently waiting for what felt like forever, watching handfuls of masked passengers slowly trickle out of the gates, finally, we saw him. He had arrived. It's hard to overstate how great a feeling it was to see Mark again. The whole situation with travel in Japan had really led me to believe that he may not get to see us this summer at all, and that we may not see him until next year. But in all the excitement of seeing Mark, something slipped through the cracks, something I didn't realize right away. If I had been looking closely, I would have noticed that the enormous blue suitcase that Mark had packed the McDonald's DS in, he didn't have it. Do you know that your bag is not with, didn't come? So the bag is delayed. I, I missed Mark explained to me that due to a baggage snafu with the airline, his luggage had not wound up on his flight home with him. So I'd be lying if I said that this situation was not terrifying. I mean, here we had this incredibly rare game, an item that virtually never showed up on auction sites, a game that as far as I know, doesn't exist anywhere else in the United States, a game that seemingly nobody had the password to access except for me, and we'd have to rely on an airline who'd already misplaced it once to ever get it back. This was a truly helpless feeling. There was really nothing we could do here except just exercise some patience and wait. Well, almost nothing. The one thing I could do was start preparing. See, even if everything went perfectly and the airline found this bag and returned it to us, that was only half the battle. I didn't just want to own this McDonald's training cartridge, I wanted to document it. I wanted to finally give the world its first up-close look at what the Mick gameplay actually consisted of. See, if I was going to do this, if I was going to put in all this time, effort, energy, and money, I wanted to do it the right way. I wanted to capture the game as it was actually played by McDonald's employees back in 2010, running on actual Nintendo hardware. So I started looking into solutions, and pretty quickly I realized what I wanted was a 3DS modified for video capture. But here's the thing. In 2020, getting your hands on a 3DS capture device is much easier said than done. For example, check out this MLIG video from last April. I wish we could say we were able to show you great ideas that you can go and try for yourself right now, but the reality is that at this moment, the 3DS is in kind of a bad place. And what they say in that video is completely true. The availability of hardware modified 3DSs in 2020 has dried up almost entirely. And from doing a ton of research, I realized that there was really only one person left on earth who could help me with this problem. And that was a console modder based out of Germany named Stefan Merki. So 
bieten wir seit mehr als zwei Jahren die Installation der 3DS Capture Card an. For years now, Stefan has run a shop called Merkey.net, where he sells capture cards and hardware mods for the Nintendo 3DS. This site came up over and over in my research. By all accounts, Stefan was one of the best and most reliable hardware modders out there, able to install a full suite of capture devices and other useful hardware modifications, and he seemed like a perfect fit for this project. So, excitedly, I went to Stefan's website, and he had stopped selling them. We chatted a bit via email with Murky, a European distributor for both Katsukitty and Loopy kits. And he tells us that he is also getting out of the game once his existing stock is depleted. He seems to believe that his business can no longer count on receiving a return on investment for additional 3DS hardware. Stefan had just posted an open letter on his website announcing that he was, sure enough, out of the modding game, retiring after seven long years of modding Nintendo hardware for a living. Still, I knew I had to try. So I reached out to Stefan personally. I pleaded with this man, the Hattori Hanzo of 3DS hardware modification, trying my hardest to persuade this master of his craft into coming out of retirement for one last job. I explained the situation to Stefan, that I was painfully close to getting my hands on this ultra-rare DS game, and that I needed one of his devices to share it with the world. And it took some convincing, but eventually, he agreed. But there was a caveat. Stefan said he would need me to send him some American 3DS hardware to modify. So I went out and purchased a brand new, new 2DS XL and mailed it off to Germany. You're left-handed too. Yep. Smart one. That's what I hear. More on that later. In the meantime, I also continued to closely monitor this piece of lost luggage. Balancing all these things, the auction, the missing baggage, trying to persuade a retired German modder to make me a custom 3DS for capture, it was overwhelming trying to keep all these plates spinning at once, especially knowing that if even one of these things fell through, the whole project would likely fall apart. Eventually, after hours of checking the luggage delivery link over and over and over, an update came in the next day. Yeah, wait, what does it say? Airlines baggage information delivery info. Oh, okay. This is from an email address called welcome well, to where's my suitcase.com. <laughs> where is where is your suitcase? Recently your baggage was delayed while flying into Raleigh Durham International Airport. You're receiving this email because we will be handling your delivery on behalf of American okay. Airlines. So we far have so good. We have entered your baggage claim into our system. We are working with the airline to get your baggage as fast to you as possible. If all goes according to plan, we'll get this bag by tonight at 10 p.m. I mean, this is the closest I've ever been to this McDonald's DS. We are, the trajectory is correct. It's on the right path. It's in spitting distance. It's just, it's past so many hands, you know? Who can really trust? Focus. What if a little greedy Gus at the airport snuck his hand in there and decided okay. he wanted a McDonald's Game Boy? Who okay. can say? So All right. There's your info on that. Thank you. Wave six. Russell playing Monkey Ball downstairs if you want. Oh, what? To what the f? <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> the baggage had apparently arrived at our airport and was set to be delivered to our house that night. And then. On August 4th, at 10 p.m., there was a knock on the door. Hi. Hi. This is uh, for Mark? Uh, yes. Uh, yep, that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a good night. You too. Oh, my gosh. It had arrived. Here it is. Okay. Oh, this is it, right, Mark? Yep. Very precious cargo. Indeed. You got the goods. This is smuggled across country borders. Multiple states. Multiple it's states. it's changed hands more times than I can count between postmen. Oh my gosh. Everything is all jumbled up in here. This is not how I had everything. Well, I'm, I suspect it was packed pretty safely by our, our friend in Japan, right? Oh my God, is this? There's part one. There's part two. Wait a minute. <laughs> There's no way somebody would snatch it. Here it is. <laughs> you never know with TSA, dude. Maybe like, yeah, there's a lithium ion battery in it. And right. It wouldn't let me check it through. Maybe. That was the, th the thought in my head just now. So yeah. Taking it. Getting lithium batteries through customs can be tricky. So oh I my believe God. what you have here is the charger. Okay. I think this is the actual device. Okay. That's based on how much it weighs. All right. So you haven't opened this part yet, right? I haven't opened anything. This is a, this is a huge moment. <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> This is so thoroughly wrapped. I, I'm really, and I'm grateful. It, it needed every every bit of wrapping here. Okay, hang on a second. There's something pretty interesting going on here. Okay. You ready? That is beautiful. Look at the matte black McDonald's logo. You know, MKBHD would get a kick out of this, I think. <laughs> it's in such good condition too. Shouts out to the the McDonald's employee who took. So it has a cartridge. It's not just pre-installed. Oh, buddy. That's what she's an unassuming cartridge with incredibly high value and and precious data. And then what is going on over here? Why is why what is the second thing? I'm so this number, I from the YouTube videos I've seen of the people who can't get past the title screen, I'm pretty sure there's a six-digit code that's needed. Wait, there's another one? <laughs> there's two? <laughs> what? Two McDonald's DSIs here. Wow, they're both they're both like in incredible condition too. That matte texture is so nice. The DSI is a very beautiful and underrated device. And then let's see what's the the last piece of the puzzle here. Yeah, Mark, I think your suspicion is correct. I think this is just a yeah, pretty standard. DSI charger here. Oh my god. Wow, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Robert, for filming. At long last, this ultra rare game, and allegedly the password for it, was in our hands. This incredibly rare McDonald's branded DSI, this even rarer McDonald's Japan employee training game, and arguably the most precious part of all, the long lost unique six digit password that would let us access the game for the first time in 10 years. Finally, at long last, the game was safely in our hands and that meant that there was only one piece of the puzzle left. And sure enough, a few days later, another package arrived, this time from Germany, containing the modded new 2DS XL. This was the final piece. This was the last ingredient necessary to share this game with the world. The only obstacle left to surmount was the language barrier. I can't read Japanese, but I know somebody who can. So I reached out to Samuel Messner again and asked him if he'd be down to join me for this first ever playthrough of the McDonald's DS training game. He agreed. Dude, I'm excited to see the icon for it. Yeah, yes, good point. This is a big moment for me. I have not actually turned this game on yet. I've played zero seconds of this. As has everyone in the United States, as far as I can tell. Oh my God, it's fancy. Damn, I kind of wish that that was what the cartridge looked like. Because it, it's got kind <laughs> of a feel the magic XYXX vibe to it. Dude, I can't. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving, loving it. it. I'm loving it. I am loving it. Wow. FMV! Oh my god. Dude. <laughs> Happy McDonald's customers all over the world. So. This opening video was on YouTube, but I avoided watching it because I didn't want to take away from that moment, and I made the right call. <laughs> Wowee. All right, so we got three menu options here. Can you help me help me out with these? Yeah, so the first one is a password input. The second is a password, uh, like change your password. And the third one is serial code input, which is probably what we're going to want to do here. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm diffusing a bomb here. Dude, I don't know. I don't know if you caught that. 
It's got the ba da ba 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 jingle. <laughs> it's incredible. It's so spiritual. Okay, this has to be it because it's a six digit code that only takes numbers. All right, let's 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 punch this in. Four, eight, five. Oops, I fucked up. Is this backspace in the lower right? Yeah, it is. Four, eight, two. Such a distractingly beautiful song. All right, here we go. I... What does it say at the bottom? Complete input. All uh, right, let's see here. Oh no! Um, the, uh, the, what you have entered is incorrect. Please, uh, enter the correct information. This moment, in all honesty, scared the crap out of me. My mind flooded with terrifying possibilities. Had this DS cartridge save game been wiped somehow? Had the seller sent me the wrong copy? Or, worst of all, were these photos fake? Had we been straight up scammed here? What if it's the password? What if they set the password to be... Because it is a six-digit password. Try it. Yeah, why not? I hope, I hope so, because I don't know what I'm going to do if this doesn't work. Okay. And here it says, please enter the six-digit password that you yourself have decided. This is where I'm, I'm unsure whether, whether this will actually work. All right, 482500. I'm hoping this works. <gasps> yes! 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 <laughs> All right, we're in. We're in uncharted territory, man. Dude, the password had worked. Wow, we got the buns. Two pickles is a, that's an iconic bit of McDonald's lore. Two patties. I think I'm done. Oh, it's 3D. Now our full playthrough of this game took over an hour. So I'm going to spare you from watching all of that and just show you the highlights. Is this my name? Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, let's 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 go with this guy then. Oh, let's get the egg. Oh yeah. Oh, this sound design is so good. Are you hearing that? Dude, the fact that it's like a sprite of a cow with a McDonald's M on it! Hey, my name is Donald McDonald! Okay, um how many pickles on a double cheeseburger? Easy. Easy. Oh. We're now getting an isometric view of the whole store. Whoa! Oh my god. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it says that you can send a um, an encouraging message to someone else in the McDonald's crew. Dude. Dude, that is incredible. Now, as we played through this game, we just kept making discovery after fascinating discovery. Is that Ronald McDonald's hand? <laughs> Way too much to put in this video. And side note, if you're one of the people crazy enough to want to watch all 73 minutes of this playthrough, you can just click the join button underneath this video and you'll get access to the entire thing as one of my channel members. Anyways, it goes without saying that this was an immensely satisfying moment, playing through this game for the first time and having a translator by my side to help out. It felt like a victory. It's a, a, a great piece of history that we've we've uncovered here, and I'm looking forward to um, sharing it with the world. Yeah, and thank you for uh, doing your part for uh, video game preservation, man. <laughs> this will be the first video material in the world that actually goes into properly what the game is like. This has existed exclusively within the memories for <laughs> like a decade. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest though, no one was gonna document the McDonald's <laughs> video game, DS game before you. However. <laughs> About one week after I recorded my playthrough with Samuel, I was catching up with a friend over FaceTime and she asked me what I'd been up to lately. So oh. I walked her through this whole story, the long lost game, the Bloomberg video, the auction, the French guy, Cody Tantweet, who had a copy but couldn't get in because he didn't have the password, etc., etc., and how I had just managed to get to it myself. And she says to me, so wait, that password, was it an employee ID number or what? So I go to Cody's video to show her the exact password screen the guy was stuck on. And I noticed something new. While showing her Cody's video, I spotted something in the description that I hadn't seen before. A new message that had been edited in since the last time I watched it, in French, in all capital letters, 
Edontifon 2v. And beneath that, logins found with a YouTube link. I clicked the link. And it took me to a live stream archive broadcast on YouTube with 131 views, 58 minutes long, where Cody enters a password. And it actually works. He gets in, plays through the entire game, just like me and Samuel did. And here's the really devastating part. Cody's playthrough had been streamed live to YouTube on August 30th, 2020. My playthrough with Samuel, that was on September 18th, barely two weeks later. We'd been beaten. I gotta be honest with you here, this was a little bit heartbreaking. To have come this far and put in all this effort, I was kicking myself. If I had just moved a little faster, procrastinated a little less, I could have been the actual first one to document this game. At the same time though, I was happy for Cody and also mystified by the fact that he'd somehow gotten the password for his cartridge. I mean, we all know how I got the password for my version, but how the hell did Cody get his? Well, strap in, because Cody's journey to get his cartridge's password is even crazier than my own. Over on that obscure gamers forum thread from the beginning of this video, Cody tells the full story. In short, he was able, through a friend, to meet in person with the IT director of McDonald's in his country, presumably McDonald's France. Upon seeing the McDonald's DS, this IT guy freaked out, said don't move, and then brought it to the desk of none other than the CEO. Truly the Scott president of Domino's Pizza of this particular story. It turns out the CEO's wife is Japanese and she herself had actually worked at McDonald's Japan corporate, meaning she knew exactly who to contact about Cody's problem. Weeks later, Cody found himself on an email chain with employees from McDonald's Europe, McDonald's UK, McDonald's Australia, and, of course, McDonald's Japan. This email chain, according to Cody, was loaded with information, including scans of PDFs of the game's manual, but unfortunately, they weren't able to give him a password as the individual passwords were set by individual McDonald's store management. Now, a lot of people would have given up there, but not Cody. He kept going. And the actual explanation of what Cody did next is pretty technical and honestly way above my head, but at this point, Cody actually dove into the code itself. He took apart the game's ROM and comparing the McDonald's training cartridge's save data with other DS games and began to find similarities. Then, incredibly, Cody made a huge discovery. He stumbled across a string of code in the game that contained translations of the two-character hex code for every single letter and number in the password screen. From there, he kept hunting and then found the entry in the code for crew members. And at that point, he had everything he needed. The username, LE1038. And the password he needed, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. He was in. I could not stop smiling when I first read Cody's story. This guy had jumped through about a billion hoops and roadblocks to solve a very inconsequential mystery, and to me that made me feel like he and I are kindred spirits in a way. But also, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little heartbroken that Cody had ultimately beaten me to the punch. But the irony wasn't lost on me either. This entire time, without either one of us knowing it, Cody and I had been racing in parallel neck and neck to the same finish line. And unfortunately for me, Cody had beaten me fair and square by just a couple of days. Still, I was determined to make this adventure worth it. I had come too far to just throw all this away because someone else had beaten me to putting this on YouTube. And after thinking about it for a while, I think I figured out what I can do. 
See, as of today, the only two people we know for sure have access to this game are Cody and myself. And as cool as that scarcity is, I think I want this game to be something that everybody can enjoy. And Cody's made it abundantly clear that he plans to never ever dump his copy. After spending months on this project and reading tons and tons of forum threads about it, one thing I feel pretty confident about is that people really want to see this game preserved, both just to check the game out for themselves and also out of principle. So one last time, I reached out to Samuel about my idea and Samuel put me in touch with a game preservationist named Scyther. Scyther walked me through the process of using some software called God Mode 9 on my 3DS to dump the game cartridge itself in its entirety. The game cartridge itself and, crucially, my save file, since the game requires a password. And after jumping through a few hoops, we were successful. So, I am happy to announce that if you or anyone else watching this video wants to play this long-lost Japanese McDonald's training game for yourself, I've created a page on archive.org where I've uploaded the ROM and my save file and some basic instructions, and you can download it and start playing with it today. Have fun. It's only recently now that this whole thing is over that I've been able to reflect on just how bizarre and uniquely international this journey was. The quest to get my hands on this game involved a German 3DS hacker, a pseudonymous French rival, a game archivist from the Czech Republic, international smuggling, and, for the second time in my life, the Japanese arm of an American fast food company. I still don't really understand why this keeps happening, why I seem fated to pursue these trivial stories about companies like Domino's Japan or McDonald's Japan, and though I don't know how things turned out this way, there's one thing I know for sure. I'm loving it. <laughs> Stupid ending. <laughs> Before we wrap up, I have three really quick notes. First and foremost, I'd like to extend a huge thank you once again to Bai for sponsoring this video and for helping preserve this weird little piece of internet history. There's a link in the description of this video that gives you a free 2,000 yen coupon to any new Bai users who sign up. It's a great service, I've used it a ton of times, so if you want to thank Bayi for making this video possible, please consider clicking this link and checking the site out. Also, in the time since this story began, Bayi has opened up international shipping via DHL, so getting stuff in and out of Japan is now a breeze. Also, a huge shout out to Jennifer Walton, who composed that phenomenal reorchestrated version of the McDonald's training game menu theme that you heard at the very end of this video. I couldn't have done it without her. I'm st I still laugh every time I listen to that song. It's so perfect. Uh, here's a link to that if you want to hear it. Secondly, the link to download the McDonald's DS game ROM that I dumped is linked in the description below, so please check that out. And lastly, you might have noticed that right next to the subscribe button, I now have a join button under my videos. Basically, if you'd like to support me making more videos like this one, you can do so for just five bucks a month and get access to all sorts of free extras like me and Samuel's full hour-long playthrough of the McDonald's DS game, commentary tracks for my older videos, and so much more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.